cry from the inner city ghettos from young people who have no hope or future. Now a new wave of punk is coming to the affluent middle class. And that trend is beginning here in Hollywood. A house in the quiet suburbs. It could be a television backdrop for Leave it to Beaver or Family Ties. But Tim Dorn is not your freckle-faced boy next door. Now remember, this is not what punk rock is all about. It's all in your mind. He's only 16 years old. And he calls himself Razor. Always use this kind of hairspray, Aquanet, extra super hold, three times the normal holding power. I don't want to be part of, of common society. Yeah. I, want to be, I want to be reviled by society, as a matter of fact. And appearance is a good way to be like that, although, because yeah. you can't really carry around your philosophy so people can see that. You just, your appearance, I guess, is like a, a reflection of what you believe in so that people know that you are what you are. Uh, punkers in the United States, uh, for the most part, are coming from middle class homes where the families have essentially had middle class values. And Greg Bottenhammer makes his living helping the middle class cope with this new reality. He runs an organization called Back in Control. Whatever society values, punk is against. Whatever society abhors, punk is for. And if you don't think the punk movement is growing, check the walls of your city. They're concrete newspapers. These pictures were taken in the San Fernando Valley near Los Angeles. Where the valley girls used to talk trite, punkers now talk dirty and are organizing. Perhaps punk's most dangerous new phenomenon, punker street gangs. Generally speaking, in the San Fernando Valley, there's about 60 or 70 of these groups, whereas five years ago, there were about three or four. So it is proliferating rather quickly. Steve Aldivia runs the L.A. Police Department's anti-gang force, and he's baffled by this. Gangs not bound together by ethnic or neighborhood ties, but by an attitude. Yeah, it, it's, it's a very negative attitude. Uh, and they've clustered together uh, in areas like Hollywood. They come from all over and, and congregate in Hollywood. Uh, and the attitude is one of hopelessness and one of, one of uh, fuck the world, if you don't mind my saying that. In fact, that's the name of one of the gangs in LA, FTW. FTW is one of the biggest gangs. Another is FFF, which is also a satanic symbol, a theme through much of the graffiti. A field worker in the anti-gang task force, Manuel Velasquez is working his way out of poverty. And he can't understand why young people, mainly Anglos, who have everything, are so angry and defiant. This is shocking to a lot of people. But, you know, people like myself who are involved in this stuff, we see this every day. And this is the stuff that we try to tell parents watch out for my tag is razor that's what i write on walls i uh, i got a marker right here this is what i raise r-a-z a circle around the a that's what i write and uh circle around the a for anarchy yeah. but of course when you see this in your neighborhood you see this on your kid's folder when he comes from school you see it on his clothes or anywhere it as those are the signs you look out for <laughs> danger danger that's a warning sign <laughs> And if you want anarchy, come to Razor's room. A jumble of punk and junk. Fort Goof it is not, but he and his friend Jamie are just posers, to use a punk word. Not old enough to take on the world yet, just their parents. Again, Bottenhammer from Back in Control. When a 14 or a 15 year old boy or girl uh, essentially tells mother, uh, you, you bitch, clean the room yourself, uh, we have a distinct problem and kids in too punk or in too metal tend to live a lifestyle of doing what they want to when they want to disregarding anybody else's values or wants and the medium is the music and what's playing in los angeles at the troubadour once a legendary folk club it's nasty habit around the corner a whiskey a go-go they're dancing to christian death and at the Music Machine, one of L.A.'s top punk bands. Social Distortion. And if the medium is the music, what is the message? The lifestyle is sex, drugs, rock and roll, 
parental authority. Why? Because if you're a 14 year old boy and you don't know who you are, the world's, you know, a, a place that is emotionally dangerous. You're never sure of how you're going to be accepted within the group, what's acceptable, what isn't. All you have to do is step into this identity and you're somebody. It has great emotional appeal. That's why it is so strong, why it is so powerful. Everybody knows my name. I mean, yeah, no, more people know my name than anybody else. Just, well, a little tenth grader's all, Razor, what's up? Then if I actually turn around and say hi, they're like fully honored and everything. Yeah. And it's kind of a fun feeling, but it's just like everybody knows my name and people come up to me and talk to me sometimes. So it's just like I'm just popular. part of the, I'm part of the school. I'm not popular, yeah. I'm just part of the well, school. Well, I mean, so. everybody knows you. Everybody knew Shan Burrell, but he hasn't been at school for a couple of months. His mother, Jackie. There's a big problem going on out there that people don't want to see, don't want to admit to. Mrs. Burrell has been going through a personal hell since her son, the same age as Razor, ran away in December. He is punk. Probably hardcore. When her son disappeared, they found this in his school locker. Pages of satanic drawings, messages from heavy metal and punk records like corrosion of conformity. This is a religion that you are dealing with here. A religion, a cult, not just a passing fancy. Shan's scribblings are not just offensive punk graffiti, but aggressive and threatening to himself and others. Have you seen him around? 13 here. This is just recently, this last Christmas. And so her search began. The picture she's showing was one taken of her son just at Christmas. Tracking down every rumor, Jackie heard he had been at a punk party in this house just two weeks after he left home. Jesus Carefully stepping over the garbage of this known punk hangout, she looks for any clue of her son's whereabouts. There is no question about it. They have got him. How are you going to get him back? Uh, I don't know. Keep pounding the streets. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay. You know anything about this house? Sure. There was a party there about a week or two ago. I'm looking for my kid. Have you, was he there? I heard he was there. Yeah, he, he did look like one of the kids that might have been there that night. He might have been one of the kids that was there, because there was, there was a bunch of them, about 200, 250 kids that were at that party that night. For Jackie Burrell, there is no answer so far, and no solution. And that's what's so frightening. Thank you. You're welcome. To the beat of social distortion, the punks are slam dancing in the pit of this club. A macabre dance of despair, violently hitting each other instead of the outside world. I'm finding out a little bit too late exactly what's in these songs. Granted, a lot of kids will outgrow it. Some, for some unknown reason, and I still can't understand why his dad can't understand why he seems to be one that's just like swallowed up by it and you don't appreciate you think oh i'm tired of this greg bodenhammer and his back and control group do well catering to the fears of the middle class for a decade he's run a depunking center counseling parents to take punk seriously regain control unrealistic expectations cause a lot of problems and in this family dad and the kids are in battle almost every night these may not look like prospective parents of punks but then neither does the mother of tim doran now razor yeah i just wanted to find out what you think of all this his stage that he's going through you think it's a stage yes i hope it is yeah. it's a stage i have to go through and i'm giving it two years and after that i'll pull all my hair out <laughs> 
society can't live like that. I mean, you don't see them at 35 or 40 like this. That's because punk rock hasn't existed that long, Mom. It's only been since 1977 or so. You mean I have to pull my hair off now? If you want to, go ahead. Chance. Go ahead, I don't really care that much. Well, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to go very soon now. I have my appointment with my therapist. I have to see him at least twice a week now. So you can live with <laughs> racers. <or something. laughs> That's not why, and you know it. The police don't get the joke. Uh, fr frankly, uh, there's been a, an attitude that they're going through a phase. These are just kids going through phases. They'll grow out of it, etc. But uh, the longer we wait for them to grow out of it, the more violent they become and the more serious the problem is. Uh, we were hoping it would go away a few years ago, but it's proliferated. Back in Toronto, the goofs are coming home. Crush your car! Stir your face! Throw a firebomb! Pick your place! Considering their material, it's unlikely they will ever have a hit record. But they have a following and an influence, and will continue as long as punk exists to upset the standards and sensitivities of the rest of us. I can say where it's headed. It'll, it'll get bigger, there'll be more bands, there'll be more people into it. Probably eventually it will become as commercial as all the rest of the garbage that you hear on the radio and watered down to nothing and, you know, 20 years down the road, so maybe something different will come up. It was just before midnight, a school night, when Sean Forbes took the stage to sing his own song. An 11-year-old boy, Sean was born the year punk began, and now he's singing along. Next.